So the ground zero for today, we, we are defined by truth. And we're going to trust God for a word from within the word. Now, Romans 1 verse 16, and we're actually looking at the classic amplified version. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, good news of Christ, for it is God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death. One thing we need to remember, it always took me forever to try and kind of, oh, what's the good news? And that is exactly what the good news is. It's God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone. So everyone through Christ gets rescued through his salvation. And the way you get salvation is to give your life to Christ. You've got to believe that he is the son of God and in your heart. And you've got to confess it with your mouth and that he is the son of God. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And he's rescued you from sin, from their eternal death. That is the good news. And it's quite crazy because I've got, I've got to ask the question. Let's maybe I'm going to go look at the word and maybe I just, why would you? Because we are talking about good news. So ashamed means feeling shame, guilt, or disgrace, feeling inferior or unworthy, reluctant or unwilling to do something because of shame in or embarrassment. So let's just go take it to shame because I can't stand it where people go, oh, shame. But let's go see why I'm so upset about that. A painful emotion caused by consciousness of guilt, shortcoming, or impropriety. The susceptibility to such emotion. There is no guilt for those who are in Christ Jesus. A condition of humiliating disgrace or disrepute. Now let's go back to that scripture. This is actually quite hilarious. For I am not ashamed of good news. So let's take out the gospel. I have never seen or heard a person be guilty or feeling shamed by good news. The petrol price goes down. Oh my word, are you going to shut that? Will you phone a friend? Will you put it on your social media? That's good news, isn't it? Um, the prime rate for buying a property goes down. Are you ever ashamed of good news? Well, apparently you are when it comes to the gospel. Why would you be ashamed? There's no logic in it. How is it that you care so much about the people around you? Even at work, you'll tell random people on the street, did you hear that the, the guys won the rugby? Did you? What do you think about the great weather that we're having? You never shut up. But here's a scripture that actually says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel, the good news. <laughs> Why would you be ashamed of telling somebody that Jesus Christ died for them to rescue them from eternal death? Why would that be something that we would be ashamed of? For I am not ashamed of the gospel of the good news of Christ, for it's God's power working unto salvation for deliverance from eternal death to everyone who believes with a personal trust and a confident surrender and a firm reliance to the Jew first and also to the Greek. That's for everyone. For in the gospel, verse 17, a righteousness which God ascribes is revealed, both springing from faith and leading to faith, disclosed through the way of faith that arouses to more faith. As it is written, the man who through faith is just and upright shall live and shall live by faith. <laughs> now, when it comes to faith, you can never, ever start a new venture, a new business, a new relationship without having faith. Faith basically means believing in the unseen. When it comes to a business, you actually take out a loan 
And you get that loan because you write down on a piece of paper a business plan of what it's going to look like. It doesn't exist. You haven't even laid the first brick. You haven't even got your first client. And by this picture that you do through words that you create in the mind of the person who's going to invest, they give you finances for you to start a business. That is unseen. That is faith. It is the absolute substance of us having to make things work. That's what faith is. And as far as I know, there is a scripture that tells us what faith is. And uh, do you know what that one is? Well, isn't it Hebrews? Isn't it Hebrews 11 where it tells us what faith is? And without faith, it's impossible to please God. We run around doing all these great things um, for God and wanting things to happen. But you know what it says, eh? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. And faith is just believing what is unseen. How crazy is that? And why would we be ashamed? I mean, you're not forcing anybody to do it, are you? It doesn't it say, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever. Whosoever means that you and I are entitled to a choice. Now, the wonderful thing about the freedom of choice is it gives you, well, choice means the power to choose. Now, be careful if you do choose Christ. You are giving power to him over your life. And there it talks about God's power working unto salvation. Now, I've got to let you know, through experiential happenings in my life, I know God is going to change yours. And it just comes by faith. Everything comes to you through faith. Believing the unseen as if it will be seen. Seeing things for that are not as if they are. Now, you might not have that life that you are looking for. You not, don't have that life that you were promised. And the crazy thing is you're going to ask me to pray for you. Well, you know what? Eh? You have that same power available to you. And it comes through faith making a decision and saying, you know what, God, you've got this. No longer I that lives, but you that lives in me. And everything I have been seen and it's not around, I'm going to have faith in that, a new beginning, a new start. All those dreams and aspirations, that takes faith. Believing in that, that is not as if it is. And that power that comes through the salvation of Christ will be yours. And you know what? It's okay. Let it have the power over you because its whole design is for your benefit. Believe it because it's true. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your greatness. We thank you for your goodness that is there to lead us to repentance. We thank you, Father, for life. We thank you for abundance. We thank you for plans that are there to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope and a future. And, Father, today, by faith, we give you that control. We allow the power of the gospel to have its way in our life. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah.